Hello, welcome. My name is Freddy and nice to see you. I'm very bad at greeting, so I suppose we can just proceed with the rest of this video. Anyway, I just got back from work. It's 6 p.m. right now. Um, it's about to get dark soon and I don't know if you have noticed this or not, but um, maybe you have seen that some of my videos have um, have actually different qualities than others. Um, you may notice that I have videos that look a bit clearer, uh, brighter, and there are also some videos that look a bit darker, grainier. Basically, those are because um, I took the videos at different times of the day. Uh, I don't have separate recording devices. I record all of my videos on my phone. It's only because I record recorded those videos at different times of the day. The grainier ones I recorded at night and the better looking ones are taken during the day and it's just that um, at night I just rely on my room light. It's not exactly the brightest light ever. In fact, I think it's it's very conducive if you want to have some rest. So I think um, for the purpose of what a bedroom should be, then I think the light is appropriate. But for recording, it's probably not the most ideal. But so yeah, that's just a little bit about the 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 possibly noticeable variation in quality of my videos but anyway uh, this video is not going to be about my video qualities recently I just uh, bought some books in fact I bought many books uh, I guess this is probably one of my biggest hauls ever I think probably in my life uh, I actually bought more than 10 books I mean, I know the exact number of books that I bought, but let's just say that I bought many. But they are all used books, so I actually did not end up spending um, as much as I would if I have bought uh, new books at the same, uh, at the standard price. So it was, it was really great because retail therapy shopping is really fun. I... <laughs> I enjoyed shopping, especially shopping for books. I actually bought this from uh, one of my favorite sites ever. It operates in Malaysia and also delivers to Singapore. It's called Books and Bobs. Um, if you live in Malaysia and if you are interested in used books, you can check out that website. I kind of linked it down below. Uh, this is not sponsored, so this is just me talking about my favorite bookstore. But anyway, the reason why I want to talk about the haul this time is be because uh, for this particular shopping session, uh, the books that I bought were slightly different. Not in a sense that they, they are dramatically different, but I just thought that I wanted to revisit my past <laughs> as a classic reader. So FYI, when I was about 17 or 18 years old, or maybe even 16, I used to read a lot of classics. Um, in fact, most, most of the things that I read back then were actually classics. I didn't really read YA, um, you know, or books that people would consider uh, uh, kind of a so-called appropriate for my age. I also didn't read a lot of uh, modern contemporary books and there are actually reasons for that. When I was about 15 or 14, I actually read, uh, I actually read middle grade. So yeah, you, books about young people with you know, young-ish characters. But then when I was uh, when I got a bit older, when I was 15, I started to read these um, abridged versions of classical works, um, abridged versions of, say,
Pride and Prejudice, works by Mark Twain, uh, Charles Dickens, all those things. And the reason why I read those works were because when we traveled to the nearby city, Miri, with my family, there was this bookstore that sold those books at very cheap prices. Basically, each book cost only nine ringgit. That's approximately uh, nine divided by four, <laughs> uh, maybe about one to two dollars per book. So it was really cheap. And there were hardcovers, abridged classics, for kids, hardcovers, really bougie. So that's why um, we got tons of those. And I ended up having a lot of those as, um, as a teenager. And that's how I got interested with classics. And then I just kind of decided to graduate, graduate <laughs> into uh, original text. And it just so happened that, you know, because the original texts were written by dead authors. Uh, so copyright is no more. Public domain is awesome. So it was really easy to get. Uh, these books, especially those boring ass penguin editions with boring green covers, they cost also about nine ringgit, which was dirt cheap. And by then, I ended up buying a lot of those. And since I was also living in allowance, so I ended up having all of those uh, with me. I bought a lot of them, read. Some of them, apparent, I think there are still some of those Green Penguin classics that I've not read, like War and Peace and Vanity Fair. Yeah, I've not read those. But anyway, I, yeah, I did spend a lot, a big chunk of my teenage years reading classics. At the time, my comprehension was probably slightly different than what it is right now. When I got into um, foundation studies and later university, I started to read more modern contemporary work. So that was the period in which I kind of left classics behind. I didn't ditch them completely. They are still around uh, in my life, but by that time I started to focus more on modern works and now I think uh, I would like to kind of revisit uh, the classics again and hopefully with the years <laughs> with the years that I've um, acquired the years of experience it's not that many years anyway um, but I definitely think that um, my reading skills uh, have improved in some ways I would like to see how is my reading experience for classics differ uh, this time. And so it was during this, uh, this, this, this whole that I actually got a few classics. And these were definitely books that I would have read at the time that I would have been really interested in. Now, I think I regained that interest. So yeah, let's just take a look at what books I got. I actually got two books by George Eliot. Uh, the first one is Silas Marner. My sister actually had a an abridged version of Silas Marner for children, uh, and it's in it, it's at our parents' home right now. But I've never really read that. I don't know. I just got kind of in, ex, um, interested with uh, Eliot's book because. A lot of people have been talking about it. There have been a lot of nice comments about uh, books by George Eliot, and that's why I decided to get this. Another reason is because this one is vintage edition. I just like things that are like kind of collectibles. You know, I really like this red spines, and I also really like the way the concept the cover is designed you know basically with vintage followed by the author's last name over here it's really consistent and I think it's really neat really beautiful really sleek um, you know like how they just put the author's last name at um, most of the books that they have except for Inferno because who cares about Dante's last name right 
and because I saw that uh, there was another George Eliot book, I also got that one as well. And this one is The Mill on the Floss. When I was on my classics reading phase, I also read a lot of um, Penguin popular classics, which is, you know, which is which are books that have covers with this design, painting over here, rounded section with the title and the author. And they have really consistent design as well. This one was uh, quite cheap. Also, you could get this. Um, at 9 ringgit as well, I think 9 to 10 ringgit, so it was really cheap. Kind of similar in price with those green penguin classics books. Also having the same cover design, also penguin popular classics, is this book by uh, D.H. Lawrence, The Rainbow. Back then I actually read two books by D.H. Lawrence. Uh, the first one that I read was Sons and Lovers. I actually liked that one better compared to Lady Chatterley's Lover because I don't know when I uh, when I got into Lady Chatterley's Lover maybe I had this idea that you know and I was young so I had the idea that maybe the book was gonna be raunchy saucy but it didn't exactly feel that way I don't know who knows if I read the book again at this age then I'll have a different experience maybe I'll catch something that I didn't at the time and I'm pretty sure that at that age reading those classics I'm pretty sure I did not catch a lot of things so I think it's gonna be something worth a try in the future you know rereading some of those classics that I read next book is um, Mary Barton by Elizabeth Gaskell. For for this writer, for Gaskell, I am not exactly sure if I purchased some of her books before um, because I definitely have seen Gaskell uh, with, with those Collins classics really cheap as well and also you know those green penguins. I they definitely have books by Gaskell and I think there's a possibility that I have bought Gaskell books. I think I have Cranford if I'm not mistaken, but I've not many I've not read those because I got into school and so I had no time, so I ended up not have I ended up not reading some of those. But anyway, now that I got this, maybe I'll try to begin with this one instead and this copy that I got the the used copy it's really brown and I don't know it's just really really interesting the paper is uber stained so feels like I'm reading a really vintage book and lastly um, I also got this by Jerome K Jerome it's three men in a boat I've seen this before. They are also available cheap as one of those green penguins. But um, yeah, I saw this. And this is actually published under the Penguin Classics uh, series with this kind of cover design. This cover design is definitely different. Um, they are definitely not cheap. I'm, I'm, I am sure of that this design the new copies would definitely sell at kind of the same price as regular books you won't get nine ringgit for this copy so there you have it all of those five books that i got in this haul i think uh, i also got uh, a lot of other books which are obviously more modern but i think i'm not going to talk about all of them i did kind of mention some of them in my Instagram account so if you are interested to check that out you can just go to my Instagram um, but of course I didn't take picture of all of those anyway I only took pictures of some and I also do not take photos every day because I suck at social media so I'm just gonna keep 
the books that I bought in this supposedly the biggest hole ever <laughs> as a mystery. And I'm just gonna like, what, uh, reveal what I'm gonna read in my regular TBR videos or my book talk videos. So that's it for now and I hope to see you again in another video. And until then, take care and bye-bye.